Welcome to another session of Soviet with Sir June. Today's episode, we are going to discuss about addition and subtraction of radicals. So when we are adding and subtracting radicals, para lang tong nag add tayo ng mga algebraic expressions or nagsusubtract tayo ng algebraic expressions. So before we go to addition and subtraction of radicals, it is important that we should know first like radicals. So like radicals, these are radicals with the same radicands and at the same time indices. So kailangan parehas. Magkaparehas ng index at the same time yung radicand. So these are some of the examples. The square root of 2 and 3 square root of 2. So they do both have same indices. The index is 2 or square root of 2. Same with 3 square root of 2. Okay, and then the radicands here, we have the same. We have 2. We also have cube root of 5 and negative 9 cube root of 5. So what is important is to know if the indices and the radicands are same or not. Kapag ka magkaparehas, therefore, they are like radicals. If they are not, therefore, they are unlike radicals. This like radicals sa ibang libro, it is also known as similar radicals. So another example, we have 2, fourth root of 6, and negative 4th root of 6. So if you can see, we have same indices, 4, and then the radicands, 6. Another example, we have 3, 5th root of xy, and negative 2, 5th root of xy. The indices are the same, 5, same with the radicands, xy. So on the other hand, unlike radicals or the similar radicals, the examples are square root of 2 and cube root of 2. If you can see, even though that they do have the same radicands, magkaiba naman yung indices niya. So therefore, they are considered as unlike radicals. Same with cube root of x and cube root of y. Even though they do have the same indices this time, magkaiba naman yung kanyang radicands. So therefore, this is considered as unlike radicals. So we also have square root of 10 and negative cube root of 5. This time, they don't have similar radicands and indices. That is why this example is considered as unlike radicals. So let us have some exercises regarding like or unlike radicals. So we need to determine if this example number 1 is like or unlike radicals. So obviously, they do have the same indices at the same time radicands. So therefore, these radicals are like radicals. Next, number 2. We have 4x square root of y and x square root of xy. If you can see, they do have the same indices too. But if you will notice, in the first radical, we have here the radicand y. And then the second radical, we have xy. So therefore, this is considered unlike radicals. Next, let us have number 3. We have square root of 8 and square root of 18. At first, if we are going to take a look at the given, they are unlike radicals, but it is important that we should simplify first the given uh, radicals. So, square root of 8, let us get the simplest form of square root of 8. The square root of 8, we should think of factors of 8 that has a perfect square. So, the factors will be 4 and 2. And if you can see, 4 is a perfect square. So, the square root of 4 is 2. Therefore, we now have 2 square root of 2. So, the the remaining 2 here is not a perfect square, so that is why it will remain inside the parentheses. Next, let us go to square root of 18. So we should think of factors of 18 in such a way that one of the factors is a perfect square. So probably those factors will be 9 and 2. The square root of 9, if you are going to extract, that will be 3. And this 2 here is not a perfect square, so therefore it will remain inside the radical symbol. So therefore, the simplest form will be 3 square root of 2. And if you are going to observe after simplifying the radicals, we have 2 square root of 2 and 3 square root of 2. They do have the same indices at the same time radicands. So therefore, we can say that these are examples of like radicals. So if you are going to take a look at the example, kailangan simplest form muna ang ating mga radicals. Before we are going to this side, whether the examples are like radicals or unlike radicals. So let us proceed with example number 4. So we have square root of 75 and square root of 200. So these radicals are not yet in simplest form. So therefore, let us get the simplest form. 
So for 75, we should think of factors of 75 in such a way that one of the factors is a perfect square. So those are 25 and 3. So the square root of 25 will be 5. 3 is not a perfect square, so it will remain inside the radical symbol. So we now have 5 square root of 3. Same process will also be applied to square root of 200. So we should think of factors of 200 such that one of the factors is a perfect square. So we now have 102. So 100 is a perfect square and 2 is not a perfect square. So therefore, if we are going to simplify this example, we have 10 square root of 2. So na simplify na natin sila. 5 square root of 3 and 10 square root of 2. Are they like or unlike radicals? They are unlike radicals because even though they do have the same indices, the radicands are not the same. So we have here 3 and 2. So let us have the last example. We have m cube root of m raised to 7 n and m squared cube root of m raised to 4 n. So what are we going to do first? So we should make sure that each radical is in its simplest form. So dito muna tayo sa una. So if we are going to factor out this one, this will be m times cube root of m raised to 7 times cube root of n. So if we are going to simplify cube root of m raised to 7, 7 divided by 3, that will be 2, remainder 1. So therefore, the simplest form of this one will be m squared cube root of m. So then, we will be multiplying kung ano yung mga nasa labas, pagsamahin. Kung ano yung mga nasa loob, pagsamahin din. So we have m times m squared, that will be m cubed. And then, yung mga nasa loob naman, m times n, that will be mn. So therefore, the simplest form of this expression is m cubed, cube root of mn. How about this expression, m squared, cube root of m raised to 4 times n? So, pag iwahiwalayin ulit natin using the converse of the product rule of radicals there. So, we have m squared times cube root of m raised to 4 times cube root of n. If you are going to simplify cube root of m raised to 4, 4 divided by 3, that will be 1 remainder 1. So, therefore, the simplest form of this expression will be m cube root of m. So, same process will be applied to the dun sa naunang example. Pagsamahin, i-multiply lahat ng nasa labas. m squared times m. That will be m cubed. Then, multiply lahat ng nasa loob. m times n. That will be mn. Finally, we now have m cubed, cube root of mn. So, if you are going to take a look at the simplest form of each radical expressions, so they do have the same indices and radicands, so therefore we can say that these are example of like radicals. So, bakit kailangan natin malaman muna si like at unlike radicals? Because we need them when we are adding, subtracting, or simply combining radical expressions. So, let us now go with addition and subtraction of radicals. So, in order to add, subtract, or combine radical expressions, importante, they should be like or similar. Next, we should make sure that the radicands are in their simplest form before deciding to add, subtract, or combine radicals. So let us have some examples. Example number one, combine the following radicals by performing the indicated operation. So we have 3 square root of 5 plus 2 square root of 5. So, ituturing lang natin na yung radical expression na square root of 5 ay parang variable. Para lang tayo nag add o nagsusubtract ng algebraic expressions. So, let us now combine. Pagsamahin natin yung mga coefficients, so 3 and 2, yun ang i-add natin. Then, we will be attaching square root of 5 since yun naman yung magkaparehas. So, 3 plus 2, that will be 5, then square root of 5. So, therefore, the simplest form of number 1 will be 5 square root of 5. So, nag-group tayo, no? Gin-group natin yung mga coefficients na nasa labas. Next, number 2. So, we have 7 square root of 2 plus 4 square root of 2 minus square root of 2. Pagsamasamahin natin yung mga coefficients sa labas. So, we have 7, 4. So, wala itong, wala itong number. Automatic na yan ay 1. So, that will be 7 plus 4 minus 1. Then, attach the common radical, which is the square root of 2. So, 7 plus 4, that will be 11. 11 minus 1, that will be 10. So, that will be 10 square root of 2. 
So next, let us go to item number 3. There. So we have 3x square root of y plus 7x square root of y minus 4x square root of y. If you can see, all the terms are similar. So pwede natin silang i-combine. Patulad dun sa naunang dalawang examples. So pag samasamahin natin, lahat ng nasa labas na coefficient. So we have 3x, 7x, and negative 4x. Then attach square root of y. So 3x plus 7x is 10x. 10x minus 4x is 6x. So therefore, the final answer is 6x square root of y. Let us have number 4. So we have 3 square root of 5 plus 2 square root of 6. What will be the answer? If you can see, the terms are unlike radicals. So since the terms are unlike radicals, the final answer will be the expression itself. So we have 3 square root of 5 plus 2 square root of 6. Next, how about number 5? We have cube root of 2 minus 2 square root of 2. If you can see, the two terms, the two radicals are unlike radicals. So can we combine them? Hindi. So therefore, the final answer is cube root of 2 minus 2 square root of 2 or the expression itself. So next, let us go to item number 6. We have square root of 300 plus square root of 27 minus square root of 75. So again, katulad ng reminder kanina, we should make sure that each radical is in its simplest form. So square root of 300 muna tayo. So we should think of factors of 300 in such a way that one of the factors is a perfect square. So that will be 103. Simplifying this further, we now have 10 square root of 3. How about 27? The factors will be 9 and 3. Square root of 9 is 3, therefore the simplest form will be 3 square root of 3. Then the last one is 75. Uh, factors will be 25 and 3. Square root of 25 is 5, therefore the simplest form is 5 square root of 3. So if you are going to take a look again, mula sa una na hindi similar, if we are going to simplify, nagkaroon ng similar radical. So let us now add the radicals. So 10 square root of 3, the simplest form of square root of 100. 3 square root of 3, the simplest form of square root of 27. And 5 square root of 3, the simplest form of square root of 75. Then, kuwain natin, let us group those coefficients outside the radical symbol. That will be 10, 3, and negative 5. So 10 plus 3 minus 5 square root of 3. So 10 plus 3 is 13. 13 minus 5, that will be 8. So therefore, the answer will be 8 square root of 3. So let us now go to our seventh example. So we have 2x square root of 16y minus 2x square root of 81y minus x square root of 4y. If you can see, we cannot, uh, we cannot add, subtract, or combine the, the radicals yet since the radicals given are not yet in their simplest form. So isimplify muna natin tong itong first term na ito. 2x square root of 16y. So, paghiwa-hiwalayin natin. So, we all know that the square root of 16 will be 4. Square root of y, since it is not a perfect square, will still be square root of y. So, we now have 2x times 4 times square root of y. 2x times 4 will be 8x. 8x times square root of y will now give us 8x square root of y. Let us now go to our second term, which is negative 2x square root of 81y. So, pag natin, so we now have negative 2x times square root of 81 times square root of y. So, the square root of 81 here is 9. So, that will now be negative 2x times 9 times square root of y. Then, we multiply negative 2x times 9. That will be negative 18x times square root of y, we now have negative 18x square root of y. So, ito na yung mga simplest form ng ating two terms. Let us now go to our last term, which is negative x square root of 4y. So, if you are going to uh, apply the converse of our product rule of radicals, that will now be negative, uh, negative x times square root of 4 times square root of y. 
the square root of 4 is 2. So we now have negative x times 2 times square root of y. Negative x times 2, that will be negative 2x. Negative 2x times square root of y, that will now be negative 2x square root of y. Next, let us now combine by subtracting the radicals. So 8x square root of y minus 18x square root of y minus 2x square root of y. Let us regroup those coefficients outside the radical symbols. That will be 8x minus 18x minus 2x. Then attach the common radical square root of y. 8x minus 18x. That will be negative 10x. Negative 10x minus 2x. That will become negative 12x. Then attach square root of y. So therefore, the final answer will be negative 12x is square root of y. Let us now go to our last example. The last example is 2 square root of 20 plus cube root of 16 minus square root of 45 plus cube root of 54. So, mas magandang pagsamahin muna natin yung mga like radicals such as 2 square root of 20 and negative square root of 45. Pagsamahin natin sila. Same with cube root of 16 and cube root of 54. Para pag nag-combine tayo mamaya, it will be simpler. So next, we should simplify each radical since the radicals are not yet in their simplest form. So the square root of 20, pwede siyang i-factor as 4 times 5. Si square root of 45 naman, that will be 9 times 5. So we now have 2 square root of 4 times 5 minus square root of 9 times 5. Okay? So next, dito naman tayo. So cube root of 16 plus cube root of 54. So, nakadepende ang pag-iisip natin ng factors sa index. So, since ang index na itong dalawa na to ay 2, we should think of factors of those numbers such that one of the factors is a perfect square. So, different naman dito. Since the index is 3, so we should think of factors of 16 such that one of the factors is a perfect cube. Same with 54. So, those are 8 and 2. 27 and 2. So the square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of 9 is 3. So that will now be 2 times 2 square root of 5 minus 3 square root of 5. Then for this one, the cube root of 8 is 2. Then the cube root of 27 is 3. So we now have 2 cube root of 2 plus 3 cube root of 2. 2 times 2, that will be 4. So we now have 4 square root of 5 minus 3 square root of 5 plus 2 cube root of 2 plus 3 cube root of 2. So these two terms, 4 square root of 5 minus 3 square root of 5 will give us square root of 5 or 1 square root of 5. For the last two terms, 2 cube root of 2 plus 3 cube root of 2 will give us 5 cube root of 2. So therefore, the final answer will be square root of 5 plus 5 cube root of 2. So I hope that you've learned something for today about addition and subtraction of radicals. The next video lesson will still be all about operations on radicals but that time we will be discussing about multiplication of radicals. Same with division. So if you are new to our channel, please subscribe. Do not forget to like and hit the notification bell for more video lessons. So this is Sir Jude. Good day.